What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty. We're going to be talking about the new, uh, well I shouldn't even say new because this technology has been around uh, since at least the D5K2 series dozers, but we're going to talk about slope assist. What is slope assist? That is CAT's uh, 2D grade system for their dozers. If you don't know the difference between 2D and 3D, I'm going to do a whole video on that uh, here in the next couple of weeks. But in the meantime, if you haven't seen it, essentially 2D means that we're working in just a plane going this way or this way so we can keep a 2% grade going straight tip to the right or left and or we can keep a you know one or two percent grade going down or uphill depending on how we orient the machine but the machine isn't going to be able to transition let's say we were doing you know this crest of this hill the machine's not going to be able to transition at the top and know that it needs to switch to a two percent down slope with 2D grade control, you only set a slope like you would with your laser and grade rod. So there's your very quick overview of 2D versus 3D. 3D knows what the entire site looks like, it knows where the machine is, and it will adjust its slopes accordingly without your input. But this is 2D because this is slope assist. Now today specifically, we're only gonna be talking about cross slopes because of the two. You have what's called your main fall, which is what's in line with the machine, whether the machine is going uphill or downhill. And then your cross slope is your side to side slope. The reason we're starting with cross slopes is because with this particular setup, uh, it's a little bit easier than main fall. And we will get into why on the main fall video, which you can click up above to get to that video. So we're gonna start with just kind of the overview of the screen. And you're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to apologize here because with these new machines, it gets a little difficult to uh, use two cameras to get everything. So I'm gonna have to hold this camera up to show you the screen, then I'll put you back in the window for, for us actually dozing. So what we've got here is we have our screen. Uh, if you don't have this on, when you first fire up the machine, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a main fall slope indicator and a cross slope indicator, but nothing happens when I touch those. So they are purely indicate only. So what we have to do is we have to click the menu button up here and we have to go to slope assist and now you can see we have a box and that box may or may not be there uh, when you click, but one of these will. And what that means is, hey, we can interact now. We can do things. As you can see, things are happening when I touch them. So essentially the very quick overview of this is if you have a box around it, that is the one that is active. So if I want both of them active, now when I hit my autos, which is this button right here, same as it would be if we were working with 3D GPS. As soon as I hit my autos, let me get in gear here, both of those are active. You can see they both turned green. And then when I disconnect my autos, they both turn gray again, which means I am in full control of the blade. What we're gonna do, like I said, is we're only gonna focus on our, and this error message is because my parking brake is on, don't, just, just disregard, you know, this is the, the challenges of trying to make a video while you're trying to do eight things at once. All right, so we're gonna turn this off and you just click it. You're gonna see the options come up, just click it again, and that's gonna turn it off. We're only gonna focus on cross slope. As you can see right now, it is indicating what slope my blade is at. So right now, it's not my tracks, it's what my blade is at. So if I want a true read on what the ground is, we just need to set our blade down on the ground and we can see we've got about a 4.5% slope with roughly where my blade is sitting. And that's pretty dang close to what I was actually cutting a minute ago. Now what we wanna do is let's say we want to do a 9% slope over here on this edge, sloping towards this little valley we just created. We're gonna click here and that brings up this fancy little screen. What this is, if this is indicating what we're sitting at, this is indicating what the autos are going to put our blade at. And so if I click my autos, machine's not in gear. Come on now. As you can see, when I put it in gear and I click my button, my blade automatically tweaked to 3%. Let's try it again. There, I'm at 11%, so it's a little more extreme. Hit the autos, look at my blade go. So that is what the difference between this number and this number is. This is what your blade is currently at. This is what you have your autos set to. Now, what is this funky thing? Well, let's say 
we came over here and, and we had just tracked over here and we're not really sure what our grade's sitting at, but we want to carry it. That's a really good looking slope into that swale. I just want to carry it. I'm going to set my blade there and then I'm going to benchmark. I'm going to zero it out. And it's not a true zero out your slope. What it does is it zeroes out the slope to whatever your blade is sitting at. It essentially makes this number, I'm sorry, it makes this number the number that your autos are going to set to. So I'm sorry if that was a little confusing. Let me reiterate. So let's go back to this scenario. And let me, I'm gonna just change these so they're arbitrary values. Okay, so my blade is sitting at 15.6% slope. We have been running, let's say we were running a swale at 6.4%, but now I wanna carry what I've already got sitting here on the ground. So I'm just gonna drop my blade down, gonna make sure it's sitting level. And we can see that's 4.8%. All I'm gonna do is hit this button, and now I've changed it to where when I engage my autos, it goes to that 4.7%. And sure enough, if we raise, if we lower our blade down, that is perfectly in line. Now, let's say we made this pass all the way to the end, and now we wanna come back. Well, I could sit here and I could play with my increment and decrement buttons, or I could come up here and I could really start pushing these buttons and waiting, or what I could just do is hit this button right here. And as you can see, it changes your blade angle. All it does is reverses the angle of the slope that you're trying to achieve. Now, just like any other machine with machine control, you do have increment and decrement buttons. And you can change your slope by hitting these buttons. But I have figured out that only works when your autos are engaged. As you can see, my autos are not engaged. We don't have the green box. And so it's not gonna do anything when I push these buttons. But the second I hit my autos engage, well, now I can take that slope and I can start changing it and doing things with it. Now. How do we change what these buttons do, what my increment and decrement do, and how do we change whether it's this slope or this slope? Well, that's where we get into our menus here. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go into settings, and we're gonna go to slope assist. And if we go, to, and you can, by the way, you can change a lot of settings. We're not gonna get into those all day, but basically right here, joystick, increment, decrement, we're choosing if we have both autos active, which auto is going to get changed when I push my button, whether it's main fall or blade slope. Right now, and I would say, unless I'm doing a lot of work at the exact same cross slope all the time, generally speaking on a job site, I personally am gonna use blade slope a lot more because we do a lot of swales, we do a lot of uh, water contouring on properties. And so we're using the blade slope a lot versus main fall, you know, we're, we're free handing our main fall most of the time. So I'm gonna leave that there. And then you can go in here and you can change your increment and decrement size. And the cool thing is, is you can do the main fall and blade slope separate from one another. So if you think about it, most of the time, we're not doing, you know, a 10th of a percent when we're, we're making swales. You generally wanna have a two to 3% grade. So I'm either gonna run this in 0.5 uh, percent increments or 1% increments, depending on the job that we're doing. And then main fall, most of the time, uh, this is just gonna be, I'm gonna be totally honest, a lot of times I'm gonna use an arbitrary value that I pick up on the fly. So that's where those settings are. So what I'm gonna do now is we are going to set up, we agreed we want a 9% slope running into this ditch. So we're gonna get set up for that. I'm gonna screw my camera back in and then we're gonna go do a push. So all I'm gonna do here is we're sitting at 4.7% uh, for the sake of showing you the increment and decrement. I'm gonna try to get this pretty dang close. There's, oh, no, see, that's the thing. You get a little crazy, you get a little wild on this thing. Okay, so we're just gonna call that good. I take that back. You know what, this is, again, the fun of making videos. So we're gonna go flat 5%. So if I engage my autos, what's gonna happen? This number is going to become my blade. So boom, there we go, 5%. But we want a 9%. This is where I use my increment and decrement buttons. Let me make sure I'm facing my camera here. So we're gonna click it. And you can see we're going the other way. So we're gonna go the other way, do, 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 do. One more, there's 9%. But wait a second, Brian, your blade, it's going the wrong way. Why is that side down and that side up? Well, that's again, this button. All we're gonna do, hit that button. Now, oh. I just noticed something. You guys can tell I'm learning this system on the fly, so that's why I'm having these mistakes. Now, why didn't my blade do anything? Well, it's because my autos are on. 
And if you think about it, if you're in the middle of a push and you hit this button, you don't want your blade to flip in the middle of your push. So as, an, as irritating in the beginning as that is to get used to, it's actually a nice feature to keep you from botching your grade. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our autos off and I want this side of my blade to be the low side. So we're gonna hit that. Sure enough, you see the blade flip. If I engage my autos, there's my blade flip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my camera back on its little thing and we're gonna go do a quick push. All right, so we're set up for our push. Our blade right now is sitting at 2.7%. I'm gonna hit my autos. Oh, and it's gonna yell at me because I'm not in gear. So I'm gonna hit my autos and I've got it at 5%. I don't know why. Oh, it's because I didn't lock in the 9%, guys. You caught me, I didn't lock in my 9%. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase until I get to 9%. And the one thing I'm gonna do different that I forgot to do last time is remember, this number is gonna go here when I hit this little zero number or, or benchmark or whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna hit that. That's gonna store it so that on my next pass, I'm gonna automatically go to 9%. So we're set up with 9%. I'm gonna angle my blade off to the right because I want my spoils to go out of my already groomed area here. And then we're just gonna roll. And all I'm controlling now is my vertical on the blade. But as far as, as cross slope, the machine is gonna handle all of that for me. And I'm just gonna go forward like I would just any other pass. And then you can still freehand. I have not clicked out of my autos. We can still freehand. And then as soon as we hit reverse, the machine's gonna kick off the autos. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe there is a setting to where the autos will stay on in reverse in case you wanted to back drag. Um, I think there's a thing called bi-directional and I believe that's what that does, but I haven't fooled with it, so don't quote me. So here we are on our second pass. We're gonna take that down just a little bit more, hit my autos, there's my 9%. Let's go into our cut and away we go. Now, as you can see, this is not going to, I've still got to be a dozer operator, right? I've got to still think about how I want to manipulate the material so that I can be efficient and I'm not rolling all my spoils back into the hole. As we come up to the end here, I'm, I'm free handing. So you're not losing the component of needing to be a dozer operator for the functionality. But what it does do for me as an experienced operator is instead of me having to worry about keeping 9% and worrying about my ass level being accurate, and let's face it guys, even as experienced dozer operators, there's just days where your ass level isn't, isn't working for you. And I don't have to worry about it in this machine. That's a totally finished pass right there and I'm confident that's 9% because the machine's got it covered. Well, let's say we wanna do a 2% that's rolling back into the 9%. So we want a little 2% slope, 9% going down into what I've already graded. Well, that's super easy. We're already set up at 9%. I'm going to, let's engage my autos here. You gotta put it in gear. That drives me nuts, that's one thing. So engage the autos, I'm going to, decrement that down to a 2% slope. Let's do three, because why not? And then don't forget, this is what got me last time, we're gonna benchmark it. There's 3% in the computer, and away we go. This is all there is to this. I mean, this is how slope assist is really, really helpful on these jobs. You can imagine if we're trying to grade a swale around a barn pad, this is a perfect example of where this would be really convenient to have. Now I'm gonna bump over and I'm gonna do another 3% pass here. So there's my, I'm autos on, there's my 3% on my blade. And now I'm just gonna ride my left blade tip at, at grade so that we can carry the 3% uphill. As a production operator, look at how much time I just saved. And there is no questioning what my grade is doing. There's no questioning if I'm having an off day. I don't have to get out and look down my slope. It's all done for me. And that took us how long? 
on a video where I'm also actively learning the system along with you guys. How much time did we just save? That's the way we have to look at machine control as experienced operators, is look at how much time we saved. I have a perfect 3% into a 9% into the stuff I already graded. So that's cross slopes in a nutshell. If you guys have questions, feel free to reach out, but this is really straightforward stuff. These manufacturers have done such a great job of implementing this. It's really straightforward once you kind of get the basics of how the system works. So a uh, huge shout out, by the way, to the guys at Michigan Cat. Uh, they hooked us up with this machine so that we could demo it. We're in the process of looking into dozers uh, and they've been fantastic to work with. They were more than happy to loan us this machine machine so thank you so much to those guys as always hope this helps you in your business and we'll catch you on the next down and dirty guys see ya